This is going to be one of the first videos of my Genuine versus Chinese Counterfeit Spyderco series. The ones I'm going to go over today are these two. These are salts. Dragonfly salts. Uh, but I'm going to give you a little teaser on some of this other stuff. Um, the ones that I'm going to go over today, these salts, there's a huge difference between the quality of these on the right, which are counterfeit Chinese, and these on the left, which are genuine Spyderco. Huge, massive difference. But these other knives, it gets a little blurrier. And I'll, I'll show you the, the pinnacle of counterfeits here so far on Spydercos. Is this one on the top is a real Spyderco Brad Southern, and this one on the bottom, I opted to get carbon fiber on it, is a uh, counterfeit Brad Southern. But I'm going to tell you that I, I'm not making any claims about the metallurgy because I think the metallurgy on this knife is going to be far superior as far as the blade is concerned. The rest of the knife though, everything else, the titanium, everything else on, on this counterfeit knife on the bottom is absolutely superb. And um, it's finished nice, it works nice, and it is an awesome knife for the cost because this is a well-priced knife with this questionable metallurgy on the blade. It's probably pretty good. It's not bad. A couple of years ago, this would be good, really good steel. This knife, though, is going to be superb steel and everything. But I'll tell you what, as far as closing your eyes and working them and running your fingers over them, very, very difficult to tell the difference. And there is a monstrous difference in the cost between these two knives. So these are, these are some teasers. Um, I'm going to do a review. On, I'm going to do a review on those later, and I'm also going to do a review on these. This is a police. One of these is going to be a real police, genuine, which is one of the bottom, and one of these is fake. And uh, this is the genuine here, and this is the fake. And I'll cover those in some detail in another video. And then the last uh, set I'm going to tease you with today are. There's two of these three are real Spyderco militaries and one of these is a Chinese military and all three of these are very nice knives. So uh, I'll go over those two in another video on the militaries and some other counterfeits also. Today though I'm going to go over these dragonflies. So a lot of people make a lot out of the um, boxes and whether you can tell anything from the boxes. And, um, and I've handled a lot of the counterfeits and a lot of the, a lot of the real Spydercos and I can tell you don't get into the box thing. Now the boxes on these are quite different and there's some mistakes on these Chinese boxes that you can probably see from there if you're very observant. But I don't think you can go on the boxes because of this. Which is if you look at the genuine box on the left and the counterfeit box on the right, guess what? They're both made in China. And that's why these things are so doggone close is that the boxes are all made in China, maybe from the same factories, maybe from some factories that run off hours and produce counterfeit boxes. I don't know what's going on there, but since the boxes are all made in China, you can see, you can take genuine Spyderco boxes and people will point out things and say, oh, well, this is on the fake box and you'll find that same fake looking thing on a genuine box. So you can't really go much by that. But these boxes, the fakes on these cheap knives, these are the worst knockoff boxes just about I think I've seen. So there's some things that kind of jump out on those, but I'm going to show you the only one, there's only one thing you can really go by. You can't really go by the printing. The fake is on the right and the genuine is on the left. And if you'll notice on this one, I mean, really, you know, the fake is done better. So, um, and they've had, they've, people have gone in and analyzed these barcodes and stuff and where the line stopped and all kinds of craziness because, but you can't tell that because the Spyderco factories are made, these boxes are printed all over the place, I think in different factories, and there is high variation between the same model and the same thing. So uh, depending on when you buy the thing, the printing can look different on a genuine box. You cannot go by these things and how the barcodes look and how the font looks and the printing, uh, all that kind of stuff. Because I can show you some variability just on the two genuine boxes here. I don't know if you'll be able to appreciate it, but one of these this font is bolder than the other. It doesn't look like there's so much on it right now. You think you need dimmer light or something, but the, the printing on one of these is, this one is a little bolder than that one is. So some people, oh, well look at that, it's bolder on this one or it's not bold on that. These are too genuine and there's variation between these two. Um, I'll just go over some quick little things here. If you'll notice that this little white gray splash down through here didn't print too good on either end. Like I said, I would totally ignore that and not even worry about that. One thing though that is a dead giveaway on this is that the little Spyderco has to have this little cutout in the gold embossing for his mouth 
And this is the first counterfeit I've seen that doesn't have that. This one is filled in. I, I've never seen that before. So uh, that's kind of a definite giveaway. You gotta have that. Now some people will look and there's a little bitty, 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 bitty triangle in there. Some people say it's gotta be small. Some people say it's gotta be big. I think I've seen genuine boxes where it was small and genuine boxes where it was big. Ignore that. I will show you, there is one thing on boxes that I have noticed and so far it's been 100% when I open these up because it's on the inside of the box and it's something that you would blow off and think is not significant. But it is and it's something I've seen 100, across the board 100% so far. You can identify what's a counterfeit and what's not by one thing inside the box. So let me open up uh, a representative example of both of these knives here. Um, usually Spyderco ships their knives and pretty crappy shipping stuff. This one though is the Genuine, and it's in a bubble wrap, a lot of them are in bubble wraps, but some of the Genuines are in just a little thing like this. Better quality than this one, a little heavier and a little straighter, not quite so wrinkly cheap. But uh, sometimes Spyderco is in a simple sleeve. This one's in a bubble wrap, which is pretty common. This is the Genuine Salt, and believe me, it's gonna stick out the differences here in a minute. And then this is the Fake Salt. And salt is supposed to have H1 steel that is impervious to rust. So um, I should have white balanced this, but I hope you can see that the color difference in the, in the handles, the FRN, fiberglass resin, nylon resin stuff, is uh, greatly different on the real one versus the, this is kind of a dingy yellowish something. It's just, the color is not right, especially in person. It's vibrant and bright on the real one. And on this one, it's just kind of like, looks like it's been sitting in a drawer for 20 years or something. It is not the right color. It's look like it's got kind of amberish kind of discolorations in it a little bit. It's, but it's, and we're gonna get to that in a minute. But, um, so let me show you the thing on the box first is this one, had the, the Spyderco thing in it, the, the fake did not. But I want you to pay attention to this piece of foam in here, because this is the thing that I've seen 100% of the time. This one had, usually Spyderco doesn't have something that looks like it had a, a 10 cent cigar in it. It's usually, if they put something in a simple sleeve like this, it'll be flat plastic on both sides. It doesn't have these zillion wrinkles in it, it's flat both sides. And it's just a simple sleeve. It's not like this. So I've never seen a real spider coat come in that. That's one slight giveaway right there. I wouldn't go 100% by that though. But I've never seen one in this. But um, I'm not even, I didn't even look at this thing because I didn't see the point in it. But I want to show you the foam. Um, and actually, usually the foam is thicker than this, and you, don't, you can see through this foam. But if you notice, this foam is perfectly fit into the box, and this foam doesn't fit the box. It's too small. And all of the Spydercos that I've had that are genuine got this piece of foam in here that doesn't fit the box. And the Chinese, are their foam fits the box exactly the right size. But it's usually thicker than this. You can't see through it. Because this is really a bottom line knife, These, this fake Spyderco is only like six bucks shipped from China. Usually this is thick and you can't see through it, but it, one thing's for sure, on all the fakes, this foam fits the box perfectly. Of course, we keep pointing that out and they're probably gonna fix it and make it look like this. Back to the knives. The fake is on the top and the real one is on the bottom. You open the real one, everything about it, side to side, forward and back, the blade is tight. Um, it feels nice when you open it, it feels like a well-made knife, even though this thing is super lightweight, it has no liners in it, it's made to be, you know, dipped in salt water and hosed off at the end of the day and not worry about any parts of this. This is this H1 nitrogen infused steel stuff. So, uh, this knife, you open it up and it feels like a $3 Chinese knife. It's gritty, it's nasty, it's nothing is smooth about it. It opens up, it's got a ton of play fore and aft, the pivot pin is moving, I can probably tighten up some of that and get it out. For rust-free, rust-impervious steel, which is what the salt series is, it's made to be used in salt water. This one is pre, as Forrest Gump, as, uh, as uh, Robin Williams would say in the world according to T.S. Garp. Uh, this one comes pre-disastered. It's got rust on it already, yeah, right out of the box. The clip has got flash on it, chrome flash, and it's, you can rub your fingers across it. It is just, this is a nasty, nasty, nasty thing. And this has not been my experience with most of the Chinese knockoffs. They're usually extremely well done. Now the steel, I'm obviously in this one, is not gonna be this H1 steel. 
no matter what the uh, the blade uh, etching says. Uh, and we know that about the Chinese knives that they just don't have the access to the steel. But um, but it's rusting out of the box, so that ought to tell you something. There's some there's uh, quite a few other things on the uh, blade too and on the steel. So here's the genuine Spyderco. Everything looks nice and sharp on it. It's got a nice wedge on the top, which the fake blade is, does not have. It's got a pretty good edge on it. It's pretty even and well ground. Pretty, I mean, it's probably not the best spider I've seen. There's a little kind of glitch there at the beginning. The plunge cut is good on it. You can see its plunge cut is straight across there. It's good. Now the fake. It's got an absolutely crappy grind on it. Let's see if you can see it's kind of going thin and wide and all kinds of stuff. You can also see the grind marks where they ground the flat grind. It's not quite as good as the is the uh, little dragonfly genuine one on the right? Fake is on the left, genuine's on the right. You can tell the difference in there. Um, the jimping is, you know, okay. It's a little sharp on the on the knockoff. Sharper. I don't put a lot of stock in the fonts either when people analyze this stuff because I've seen Spyderco have a lot of variability in that. You can see both these are pretty darn close as far as how they're done. You certainly couldn't use that as a test. Mainly this, you just have to pick up the knife and handle these to tell that one of them's a knockoff and one of them genuine. So that's the genuine top on one on the top and the knockoff on the bottom. You can see the swedge narrowing the blade down a little bit, at least the feel of it. So um, that's just a quick review of this one. Let me show you, I will unbox this other uh, fake here real quick, just to show you the variability there on these two fakes as far as the... You can see there's a little bit of junk on there. Look at that spot. It's just feels like junk when you open it up. This has not been my experience with Chinese knockoffs, by the way. The blade's not it's okay, I guess. It's most of the most of the Chinese knockoffs are pretty sharp too. The H1 is not as crisp where it's etched. It's mainly that this thing is rusting out of the box, which is... I don't expect them to have super good steel, but that's... I'm, I, I mean, this is a low-end knife. This is a super low-end knife. This was not very much money. These are throwaways no matter what. I just... I, I've got a purpose for these, so they're going to serve their purpose perfectly, and they're going to... They're going to accomplish what I want them to accomplish in life, and they're going to do it 100% perfect for what I want them to do. But, uh, but they are nowhere near the quality of um, the genuine article here, which is really like every other Spyderco. It, it's a little tight out of the box, but it's just a... feels good. Nice lightweight knife. So... Um, those are my reviews of the um, little salt dragonflies. Let's see if we can get the, the color appreciation here. The real one's in the middle. In real life, that really jumps out at you. I, I just think that you can see, I think especially when here on the bottom, it's kind of a squashy, looks like a piece of squash or something. And it's kind of an orangish yellow and the one in the, in the top one is the same way, but the one in the middle is that pop yellow and looks all one color. Uh, one of the things I was surprised about I wanted to see is how they did the FRN because this is kind of a difficult thing to get right and they haven't done that until recently started making knockoffs of this 
kind of handle. And this is really a marvelous handle. It's, it's uh, lightweight and uh, it's strong, yet it's very grippy with the way they've done these texturing on these knives. So, uh, so I was kind of curious how they would knock it off. And they did knock off the texturing pretty good. But uh, they certainly didn't get the, the color of this one, the original. That is definitely, if you have that in your hand, it just looks like it's 20 years old and discolored and been exposed to cigarette smoke or something. I don't know. It's very bizarre color. Now you can see the edge, I think, better than anything else. It's kind of an orangish yellow. It's the wrong color. And it's the color's not pure. It's kind of got little, it's hard to say. It's not splotches so much as it's just, it's kind of got amber tones in it in different spots. So, uh, hope you enjoyed it. You need to look forward to this video on this Southern knockoff because this is a really, really well done knockoff. And the edges are polished, you know, 95% of what they should be on, like on the uh, real Southern. And this is a very well finished knife. And uh, it's real titanium. It's just, uh, and it came sharp, pretty sharp. Not as sharp as the Southern, but this knife right here is something that they can be proud of. And uh, this knife is worth what they charge for it over there, about what they charge for it, because the Southern is, the genuine Southern is way too expensive, as most of Spyderco knives are. It's an extremely nice knife, but uh, it's not worth what they're charging for it. But, uh, of course, the difference in the steel is going to be a big uh, consideration in that, but... I'm sure that the Chinese knife has got pretty rank steel on it. But I do look forward to this review, side-by-side -side review of the differences between these two knives. Most of the people that do the knife reviews, they'll have one or the other. They won't have them side-by-side, -side, which is why I'm making these videos, because I actually got the knives so that you can hold them up side-by-side, -side, and I'm going to show you the differences that I see. So, thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions just go ahead, or comments, just go ahead and post them. And I'll be uh, try to get back with you as quick as I can. Thank you.